The Gospel of Barnabas, edited and translated from the Italian manuscript in the Imperial Library at Vienna in 1907 by Lonsdale and Laura Rog, Part 46. Again spake Jesus, saying, I will set before you an example. There was a householder who planted a vineyard and made a hedge for it in order that it should not be trampled down of beasts. And in the midst of it, he built a press for the wine and thereupon let it out to husbandmen. Whereupon, when the time was come to collect the wine, he sent his servants, whom... When the husbandmen saw, they stoned some and burned some, and others they ripped open with a knife. And this they did many times. Tell me, what will the Lord of the vineyard do to the husbandmen? Everyone answered, In evil wise will he make them to perish, and his vineyard will he give to other husbandmen. Therefore, said Jesus, Know ye not that the vineyard is the house of Israel, and the husbandmen are the people of Judah and Jerusalem? Woe to you, for God is wroth with you, having ripped open so many prophets of God, for that at the time of Ahab there was not found one to bury the holy ones of God. And when he had said this, the chief priests wished to seize him, but they feared the common people, which magnified him. Then Jesus, seeing a woman who from her birth had remained with her head bent toward the ground, said, Raise thine head, woman, in the name of our God, in order that these may know that I speak truth and that he willeth that I announce it. Then the woman raised herself up, whole, magnifying God. The chief of the priests cried out, saying, This man is not sent of God, seeing he keepeth not the Sabbath, for today he hath healed an infirm person. Jesus answered, Now tell me, is it not lawful to speak on the Sabbath day, and to make prayer for the salvation of others? And who is there among you who, if on the Sabbath his donkey or his ox fell into the ditch, would not pull him out on the Sabbath? Assuredly none. And shall I then have broken the Sabbath day by having given health to a daughter of Israel? Of a surety here is known thy hypocrisy. Oh, how many are there today that fear the smiting of a straw in another's eye, while a bean is ready to cut off their own head. Oh, how many there are that fear an ant, but reck not of an elephant. And having said this, he went forth from the temple, but the priests chaffed with rage among themselves, because they were not able to seize him and work their will upon him, even as their fathers have done against the holy ones of God. Now, see, this sort of behavior arises from, they could say, well, we weren't like those people of former times in our country. Like like people saying now, we aren't like the times. Uh, You know, we're not like the people back when it was, um, you know, the period of systematic racism or, you know, whatever the deal was, um, or not even our ancestors were. It was, you know, it was just a handful of elite, right? Of course, it was wider than that, but you you know what I mean. Um, But when people look up with, as these are the people they honor, And these are, you know, like their claim to being 
like their claim to honor is these people, then pointing out these people's flaws uh, hits them harder. And perhaps, as indicated here, they're the sort that would be that if they got the chance. Uh, 47. Jesus went down in the second year of his prophetic ministry from Jerusalem and went to Naaman. Whereupon, as he drew nigh to the gate of the city, the citizens were bearing to the sepulcher the only son of his mother, a widow, over whom every one was weeping. Whereupon, when Jesus had arrived, the men understood how that Jesus, a prophet of Galilee, was come, and so they set themselves to beseech him for the dead man, that he, being a prophet, should raise him up, which also his disciples did. Then Jesus feared greatly, and turning himself to God, said, Take me from the world, O Lord, for the world is mad, and they well nigh call me God. And having said this, he wept. Then came the angel Gabriel and said, O Jesus, fear not, for God hath given thee power over every infirmity, insomuch that all that thou shalt grant in the name of God shall be entirely accomplished. Hereupon Jesus gave a sigh, saying, Thy will be done, Lord God, almighty and merciful. And, having said this, Lord God, Almighty and Merciful, he drew near to the mother of the dead, and with pity said to her, Woman, weep not. And having taken the hand of the dead, he said, I say unto thee, Young man, in the name of God, arise appealed. Then the boy revived whereupon all were filled with fear, saying, God hath raised up a great prophet amongst us, and he hath visited his people. And so it's clear that Jesus did things in the name of God, even in the Bible. It's clear that Jesus wasn't doing things in the name of himself. It says that he wasn't speaking his own doctrine, but the one of the one that sent him. Now, if Jesus was supposed to be a god or part god, do you think he would have done things in his own name and and um, had his own doctrine? I mean, even the philosophers have their own doctrines. Um, 48. Tumult at name. At that time, the army of the Romans was in Judaea, our country being subject to them for the sins of our forefathers. Now it was the custom of the Romans to call God and to worship him that they did any new thing a benefit the common people. And so some of these soldiers finding themselves on Naten, they rebuked one. Now another saying, One of your gods hath visited you, and ye make no account of it. Assuredly, if our gods should visit us, we should give them all that we have. And ye see how much we fear our gods, since to their images we give the best of all we have. Satan did so instigate this manner of speaking. You know, talking like other things are gods. That he aroused no small sedition among the people of Naten. But Jesus tarried not at all in Naten, but turned to go into Capernaum, the discord of Naten, was such that some said, He is our God, who hath visited us. Others said, God is invisible, so that none hath seen him, not even Moses his servant. Therefore it is not God, but rather his son. Others said, He is not God, nor son of God, for God hath not a body to beget with all, but he is a great prophet of God. And so did Satan instigate that in the third year of the prophetic ministry of Jesus, great ruin to our people was like to arise therefrom. Jesus went into Capernaum, whereupon the citizens, when they knew him, assembled together all the sick folk they had, and placed them in front of the porch of the house, where Jesus was lodging with his disciples, and having called Jesus forth, they besought him for the health of them. Then Jesus laid his hands upon each of them, saying, God of Israel, by thy holy name, give health to this sick person. Whereupon each one was healed. 
On the Sabbath, Jesus entered into the synagogue, and thither ran to gather all the people to hear him speak. And they, just because people say something doesn't mean that, you know, somebody's automatically taken on that, oh, all these, all these sayings of the people, they're literally true now, you know. Um, Jesus preacheth at Capernaum. 49. The scribe that day read the Psalm of David, which saith, David, uh, where saith David, when I shall find a time, I will judge uprightly, then after the reading of the prophets, arose Jesus, and made sign of silence with his hands, and opening his mouth, he spake thus, Brethren, ye have heard the words spoken by David, the prophet, our father, that when he should have found time, he would judge uprightly. I tell you in truth that many judge in which judgment they fall for no other reason than because they judge that which is not meet for them, and that which is meet for them they judge before the time. Wherefore, the God of our fathers crieth to us by his prophet David, saying, Justly judge, O sons of men. Miserable, therefore, are those who set themselves at street corners and do nothing but judge all those who pass by, saying, That one is fair, this one is ugly, that one is good, this one is bad. Woe unto them, because they lift the scepter of his judgment from the hand of God, who saith, I am witness and judge, and my honor I will give to none. Verily, I tell you that these testify of that which they have not seen, nor really heard, and judge without having been constituted judges. Therefore are they abominable on the earth, before the eyes of God, who will pass tremendous judgment upon them in the last day. Woe to you, woe to you who speak good of the evil, and call the evil good, for ye condemn as a malefactor God, who is the author of good, and justify as good Satan, who is the origin of all evil. Consider what punishment ye shall have, and that it is horrible to fall into the judgment of God, which shall then be upon those who justify the wicked for money, and judge not the cause of the orphans and the widows. Verily I say unto you, that the devils shall tremble at the judgment of such, so terrible shall it be, thou man who art set as a judge, regard no other thing, neither kinsfolk nor friends, neither honor nor gain, but look solely with fear of God to the truth, which thou shalt seek with greatest diligence, because it will secure thee in the judgment of God. But I warn thee that without mercy he shall be judged who judgeth without mercy. Nowadays it's just, it's, a lot of this stuff is, is political and it's, it's, it's not, it should have no bearing on, on whether it's good politics or not, right? And, you know, effective or popular politics is still not good if it's against truth, right? So, 50. Tell me, O oh man, thou that judgest another man, dost thou not know that all men had their origin in the same clay? Dost thou not know that none is good save God alone? Wherefore every man is a liar and a sinner. Believe me, man, that if thou judge others of a fault, thine own heart hath whereof to be judged. Oh, how dangerous it is to judge! Oh, how many have been perished by their false judgment! Satan judged man to be more vile than himself. Therefore, he rebelled against God, his creator, whereof he is impenitent, as I have knowledge by speaking with him. Our first parents judged the speech of Satan to be good. Therefore, they were cast out of paradise and condemned all the progeny. Verily I say unto you, as God liveth, in whose presence I stand, false judgment is the father of all sins. Forasmuch as none sinneth without will, and none willeth that which he doth not know. Woe, therefore, to the sinner, 
who with the judgment judgeth sin worthy and goodness unworthy, who on that account rejecteth goodness and chooseth sin, assuredly he shall bear an intolerable punishment when God shall come to judge the world. Oh, how many have perished through false judgment, and how many have been nigh to perishing. Pharaoh judged Moses and the people of Israel to be impious. Saul judged David to be worthy of death. Ahab judged Elijah. Nebuchadnezzar, the three children who would not worship their lying gods, are, well, if it, Jesus really said this, but um, usually it's the people that just are lying about what's a god, as we've seen in the other chapter. Um, the two elders judge Susanna, and all the idolatrous princes judge the prophets. O tremendous judgment of God! The judge perisheth, the judged is saved. And wherefore this, O man, if not because in rashness, in is in brackets, so it's not part of the translation, they falsely judge the innocent. How nearly, then, the good approached to ruin by judging falsely is shown by the brethren of Joseph, who sold him to the Egyptians by Aaron and Miriam, sister of Moses, who judged their brother. Three friends of Job judged the innocent friend of God, Job. Ayub. David judged Mephibosheth and Uriah. Cyrus judged Daniel to be meat for the lions and many others which were nigh to their ruin for this. Therefore I say to you, judge not, and ye shall not be judged. And then, Jesus having finished his speech, many forthwith were converted to repentance, bewailing their sins, and they would fain have forsaken all to go with him. But Jesus said, Remain in your homes, and forsake sin, and serve God with fear, and thus shall ye be saved, because I am not come to receive service, but rather to serve. And having said thus, he went out of the synagogue and the city, and retired into the desert to pray, because he loved solitude greatly. Now, some of this, as you can see, is an interpolation, because Daniel's actually a good century, uh, not a century, a good millennia, before um, people typically think he is, right? Um, so Cyrus the Great, it doesn't fit there. And it also doesn't fit because Cyrus the Great was a um, very tolerant religious figure. You know, Volkarnain, as Cyrus the Great is called in the Quran. And rule in the Bible. 51. When he had prayed to the Lord, his disciples came to him and said, O Master, two things we would know. One is, how thou talkest with Satan, who nevertheless thou sayest is impenitent. The other is how God shall come to judge in the day of judgment. Jesus replied, Verily I say unto you, I had compassion on Satan, knowing his fall, and I had compassion on mankind, whom he tempted to sin. Therefore I prayed and fasted to our God, who spake to me by his angel Gabriel, What seekest thou, O Jesus, and what is thy request? I answered, Lord, thou knowest of what evil Satan is the cause, and that through his temptations many perish. He is thy creature, Lord, whom thou didst create, Therefore, Lord, have mercy upon him. God answered, Jesus, behold, I will pardon him only cause him to say, Lord, my God, I have sinned. Have mercy upon me, and I will pardon him and restore him to his first state. I rejoice greatly, said Jesus, when I heard this, believing that I had made this peace. Therefore, I called Satan, who came, saying, what must I do for thee, O Jesus? I answered, Thou shalt do it for thyself, O Satan, for I love not thy services, but for thy good have I called thee. Satan replied, If thou desirest not my services, neither desire I thine, for I am nobler than thou. Therefore thou art not worthy to serve me. 
thou who art clay, while I am spirit. Let us leave this, I said, and tell me if it were not well thou shouldest return to thy first beauty and thy first state. Thou must know that the angel Michael must needs on the day of judgment strike thee with the sword of God one hundred thousand times, and each blow will give thee the pain of ten hells. Satan replied, We shall see in that day who can do most. Certainly I shall have on my side many angels, and most potent idolaters who will trouble God, and he shall know how to make how great a mistake he made to banish me for the sake of a vile piece of clay. Then I said, O Satan, thou art infirm in mind, and knowest not what thou sayest. Then Satan, in a derisive manner, wagged, wagged his head, saying, Come now, let us make up this peace between me and God. And what must be done, say thou, O Jesus, since thou art sound in mind? I answered, Two words only need be spoken. Satan replied, What words? I answered, These, I have sinned, have mercy on me. Said Satan then, Now willingly will I make this peace, if God will say these words to me. Now depart from me, I said, O cursed one, for thou art the wicked author of all injustice and sin. But God is just and without any sin. Satan departed shrieking and said, It is not so, O Jesus, but thou tellest a lie to please God. Now consider, said Jesus to his disciples. How he will find mercy. They answered, Ever, Lord, because he is impenitent, Speak to us now of the judgment of God. And Mark Twain wrote a story along these lines, right? And, you know, it, it, it kind of comes off with much of the same. Um, as long as Satan can assert his arrogance, you know, But, well, we don't know what Satan wanted said, but, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's better not to have to, uh, not, not to, not to stir up a fight and just have peace. That's, that's over, uh, it, it all message with that whole thing, right? Um, and peace is possible, even after years and stuff. 52. The judgment day of God will be so dreadful that, verily I say unto you, the reprobates would sooner choose ten hells than go to hear God speak in a wrath against them, against whom all things created will witness. Verily I say unto you, that not alone shall the reprobates fear, but the saints and the elect of God, so that Abraham shall not trust in his righteousness, and Job shall have no confidence in his innocency. And what say I, even the messenger of God, shall fear? For that God, to make known his majesty, shall deprive his messenger of memory, so that he shall have no remembrance, how that God hath given him all things. Verily, I say unto you, that speaking from the heart, I tremble, because by the world, I shall be called God, and for this I shall have to render an account, as God liveth, in whose presence my soul standeth. I am a mortal man, as other men are. For although God has placed me as prophet over the house of Israel, for the health of the feeble and the correction of sinners, I am the servant of God. And of this ye are witness. How I speak against those wicked men, who after my departure from the world shall annul the truth of my gospel by the operation of Satan, but I shall return towards the end, and with me shall come Enoch and Elijah, and we will testify against the wicked, whose end shall be accursed. And having thus spoken, Jesus shed tears, whereat his disciples wept aloud, and lifted their voices, saying, Pardon, O Lord, God, 
and have mercy on thy innocent servant. Jesus answered, Amen. Amen. And see, we have our privacy. We deserve our privacy. But when it comes to it, if one scales no tip right, um, the fact that we've done things, that being exposed to everybody, is going to be worse than losing our privacy, you know, to the point where it's going to be like we don't even care about that privacy. That was our right in this world. Um, 53. Before that day shall come, said Jesus, great destruction shall come upon the world, for there shall be war so cruel and pitiless that the Father shall slay the Son, and the Son shall slay the Father by reason of the factions of the peoples. Wherefore, the cities shall be annihilated, and the country shall become desert. Such pestilences shall come, that none shall be found to bear the dead to burial, so that they shall be left as food for beasts to those who remain upon the earth. God shall send such scarcity, that bread shall be valued above gold, and that they shall eat all manner of unclean things. O miserable age, in which scarce any one shall be heard to say, I have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God. But with horrible voices they shall blaspheme him who is glorious and blessed forever. After this, as that day draweth nigh, for fifteen days shall come every day a horrible sign over the inhabitants of earth. The first day the sun shall run its course in heaven without light, but black as the dye of cloth, and it shall give groans as a father who groaneth for a son nigh to death. The second day the moon shall be turned into blood, and blood shall come upon the earth like dew. The third day the stars shall be seen to fight among themselves like an army of enemies. The fourth day the stones and rocks shall dash against each other as cruel enemies. The fifth day every plant and herb shall weep blood. The sixth day the sea shall rise without leaving its place to the height of one hundred and fifty cubits, and shall stand all day like a wall. The seventh day it shall, on the contrary, sink so low as scarcely to be seen. The eighth day the birds and the animals of the earth and of the water shall gather themselves close together and shall give forth roars and cries. The ninth day there shall be a hailstorm so terrible that it shall kill in such wise that scarcely the tenth part of the living shall escape. The tenth day shall come such horrible lightning and thunder that the third part of the mountains shall be split and scorched. The eleventh day, every river shall run backwards, and shall run blood and not water. The twelfth day, every created thing shall groan and cry. The thirteenth day, the heavens shall be rolled up like a book, and it shall rain fire, so that every living thing shall die. The fourteenth day, there shall be an earthquake so horrible that the tops of the mountains shall fly through the air like birds, and all the earth shall become a plain. The fifteenth day the holy angels shall die, and God alone shall remain alive, to whom be honor and glory. Having said this, Jesus smote his face with both his hands, and then smote the ground with his head. And having raised his head, he said, Cursed be every one who shall insert into my sayings that I am the Son of God. At these words, the disciples fell down as dead, whereupon Jesus lifted them up, saying, Let us fear God now, if we would not be affrighted in that day. Fear, hope, love, and hate are all proper motivations. Fear should not keep us from doing what we should do. It should only keep us from doing what we shouldn't do. And to be more serious and um, give more strength to doing what we should be doing. And as time goes on, we find out more and more, more and more about this, you know, that the world literally could be burnt and ripped apart by forces of nature. 
And no, no, driving our cars is not going to do it. I mean, the, 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 you could be bad on the environment, but, you know, humanity and its, and its stuff isn't quite going to do it. I mean, they can kill most of each other off. That's, that's, I'm not disputing that, but, I mean, they shouldn't, but, you know. 54. When these signs be passed, there shall be darkness over the world forty years, God alone being alive, to whom be honor and glory forever. When the forty years be passed, God shall give life to his messenger, who shall rise again like the sun, but resplendent as a thousand suns, he shall sit and not, and shall not speak. For he shall be, as it were, beside himself. God shall raise again the four angels, favored of God. We shall seek the messenger of God, and having found him, shall station themselves on the four sides of the place to keep watch upon him. Next shall God give life to all the angels, who shall come like bees, circling round the messenger of God. Next shall God give life to all his prophets, who following Adam shall go, every one to kiss the hand of the messenger of God committing themselves to his protection. Next shall God give life to all the elect who shall cry out, O Muhammad, be mindful of us. And of course, this would have been in another language, so it isn't as simple as, oh, someone claiming to be a prophet is Muhammad, and nobody by that name has ever claimed that before. And, uh, you know, um, it wasn't as simple as that, but... At whose cries pity shall awake in the messenger of God, and he shall consider what he ought to do, fearing for their salvation. Next shall God give life to every created thing, and they shall return to their former existence. But every one shall possess the power of speech. Next shall God give life to all the reprobates, at whose resurrection, by reason of their hideousness, all the creatures of God shall be afraid, and shall cry, let not thy mercy forsake us, O Lord our God. And after this shall God cause Satan to be raised up, at whose aspect every creature shall be as dead, for fear of the horrid form of his appearance. May it please God, said Jesus, that I behold not that monster on that day. The messenger of God alone shall not be affrighted by such shapes, because he shall fear God only. Then the angel at the sound of whose trumpet all shall be raised, shall tr sound his trumpet again, saying, Come to the judgment, O creatures, for your creator willeth to judge you. Then shall appear in the midst of heaven, or the valley of Jehoshaphat, a glittering throne, over which shall come a white cloud, whereupon the angels shall cry out, Blessed be thou, our God, who hast created us and saved us from the fall of Satan. Then the messenger of God shall fear for that he shall perceive that none hath loved God as he should. For he who would get in change a piece of gold must have sixty mites. Wherefore, if he hath but one mite, he cannot change it. But if the messenger of God shall fear, what shall the ungodly do for a full of wickedness? And... Well, whatever our wealth is, we need something more than that, don't we?